so as you met when you say it was a second uh, session right. so to understand and to to keep this uh, faster uh, uh, is it mandatory to attend the first session whatever you have each and everything is an individual item i will walk you through it's a, uh, it's yeah. a good question good question sai so is everyone able to uh, see my screen yes oh, okay that's that's pretty cool so first thing is i would like to spend 2 minutes time uh, just to uh, showcase couple of things uh, nothing uh, more but just we will uh, see couple of uh, things so this is my meetup group all the events i'll be publishing it here the first point and the second point is uh, the youtube channel this is my youtube channel here if you come and see the first episode which we did it was uh, this one that's just the fundamentals of uh, how you create a microservice in dapper and i'll walk you through uh, what is that we discussed uh, there and what is that we are going to discuss now i'll show the difference then you can connect it and each and everything is an individual piece okay and we will correlate how it is individual piece and all these events are being conducted from the microsoft learn community and this is my uh room uh, it's called swami the learner that's the room and i will be hosting all the events here and i'll generate the link and post it here all the links are here and um uh, sorry i got delayed again i'm unable to uh, control my mistake okay that's about uh, what the events are please feel free to join uh, this meetup and uh, please feel free to uh, join this one i will post it here and uh, now i will give you the links where you will find all the uh, source code and the demo script okay so sorry swami we don't see the chat window here i don't know if you disable it or something like that oh is it uh, just give me one minute Okay. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a good point. If we can enable, it will help us to collaborate better. We don't need to interrupt your streaming. Right, 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 right. Uh, what did I Thanks. do? Uh, let me re-enable that. Someone asked me this question before also. Uh, how do I... It will be in the settings, meeting options. Don't show chat bubbles. Oh, now. No, not for us at least. Okay, but people can dial. I guess with Microsoft Community Event Tenant uh, account we have joined, so I think in that chat option will not be enabled. I guess I'm not sure. Like. Uh, i could not see anywhere anyone uh, before also right right uh, basha that could be one reason but uh, but anyways uh, i'm flashing it on my screen you guys see uh, this you will see if you find, uh, search with vishy pilot it will be a green circle uh, blue circle so inside that uh, the speaker series today's date okay dapper service to service invocation this is the demo script where we will find whatever we are going to discuss today everything is here okay that's the one and uh, and oh what i can do is i can put it here in the uh, in here isn't it meetup place meetup link yeah uh, in this link if i put it it will stay okay that's the one and uh, the second one is uh, it will be here tech skills academy this is the entire organization which i created where i'll put in all the demos so this is the one uh, this is the demo i'll bring in the first episodes also as of today 
tick uh, this one it has got all the code and uh, how do you execute all the tips and tricks are in here so i'm putting it this one also so both the links are available here now it's a good point even though we don't have uh, we have, we have everything okay without any further delay let's come back and uh, start this so i'm a learner so apologize if i do any mistake and you can watch the first episode here i'll create a playlist for this uh, dapper microservices it will be rest of the year will continue so let's quickly see one single piece here so i'll create it separately now if you see from the overview perspective it's a portable and event driven that's one point we'll come back to that one uh, before that we will see what is that we are going to do let's discuss about the big picture and 30000 foot of dapper please watch the previous episode but these are two different uh, pieces that just shows that how do you create a single microservice and how do you uh, integrate with this dapper sidecar and you can make a direct connection to the api or you can go through dapper i'll show you that one also how do you communicate with uh, both of this and how does the service to service invocation works and uh, the resiliency which is key piece so we'll see all uh, all these things in a, in a in a minute okay so let's see uh, this is a big picture we will have two different microservices and when i'm using this microservices or cloud native applications high sounding words but if you see uh, there are checklist a list of items to have it to call any service to be a microservices or cloud native i'm not uh, going through that checklist but even though it is a single unit of uh, uh, service i'm calling it as a microservice but assume that this itself is microservice having its own ci cd pipeline and deployment in azure everything will do it little later in the game but assume even though i'm using high sounding words it's a microservice assume that it is part of a microservices and we'll see what dapper is from the 30000 foot and we'll speak about two different microservices one is the orders microservices where people will order and in a one or two episodes i'll bring in the client ui also maybe the blazor server or react 18 whatever is the latest one we'll work on the latest and uh, we other one is item reservation so if you order uh, one cookie to t-shirts so one cookie will be one call from orders reservations to items reservation <laughs> and two t-shirts is another call so that's the one but as of now i didn't hook it up the database because everything whatever we are going to do is step by step we will be doing and what does that step by step means i'll show you if i come back to the building services in this building service <laughs> these all things it is supporting so january we are discussing on service to service invocation then we'll work on the state management then we'll work on publish subscribe then we'll work on bindings then we'll work on actor we'll see how many blocks we are able to cover we will see so today's topic we are sticking to the game plan service to service invocation then how these two services communicate with each other we can make a direct call or we can go through dapper why going through dapper helps us we'll discuss about that when we are talking about the service to service invocation and uh, what is name resolution and uh, the resiliency is a key piece in uh, any of these things so we'll discuss about 
the resiliency also. That being said, in the, inside the resiliency, we have uh, timeout, retries, and uh, circuit breaker pattern. So we have all these uh, three pieces. We'll be uh, discussing those three, okay? So now we will start with the first piece. So if you come back and see that Dapper V, it is uh, a portable event-driven runtime. So that's about the first point. Let me come back to the big picture. Just now we covered it. We'll see this one. Well, let's go to the concepts and uh, overview. And inside, if you see that, you can work in any programming language. Let it be Go, Node.js, Python, or .NET, different flavors of that one. And through that, you can communicate using HTTP or gRPC. For today, we will stick to the game plan, HTTP. We'll come back to uh, gRPC when we are discussing the second building block the state management or pub, sub or binding, but it will be a continuous journey for rest of the year. We'll spend .NET 8 and uh, Dapper, the distributed uh, microservices. We'll learn step by step, including the observability resiliency we are discussing today, service invocation and resiliency. These are the two pieces which we are discussing. So everything is being done by the Dapper. So heavy lifting is being done by that and you can deploy in multiple clouds or on our own premise. And uh, if you see that the first building block, there are other building blocks every month, even if we spend on one building block and develop this microservices on its own way. So it will be uh, a lot. What I'll do is I'll, uh, okay. So what is this service to service invocation? Uh, resiliency, resilient service to service. Uh, that means what, what will happen is <clears throat> it will be taking care of <clears throat> the invocation and also the retries um, on the service A to service B. Now, when we are talking about the retries, how many ways service A will talk to service B? We'll, we'll speak about that one. So when you see there is a service A talking to service B, it can make a direct HTTP call or it can make a remote procedure call. Okay, let's break it into two pieces. One is direct request and response. That means service A makes a call to service B. Service B returns some response or it timeouts or it throws an exception. It could be different uh, output when service A calls service B. That is direct request response. And another way is asynchronous one. And when I'm saying asynchronous, it's not that uh, async HTTP calls. It's, it's about a messaging. Like service A drops a message in the service bus and service B picks up the message and processes it and drops the response back inside the service bus, or I'm calling it an ESB, Enterprise Service Bus, the bone, backbone, and service A picks up the response. The two communication methods we have seen, whether it is direct service to service or through messaging. Which one should I use? Messaging is more reliable. Yes, messaging is more reliable. So what is the scenario? And what should you use? That's what is choosing the right tool for the job. Now you have a kitchen knife and you have a chainsaw. You need to cut tomato. Now what is that you're going to choose it? Are you going to choose the kitchen knife or the chainsaw? Chainsaw is more powerful, but you might cut your hand or you might uh, break the entire kitchen table. So choose the right tool for the right job. So my take is, if at all, it's service A makes a call to service B, which goes and gets some rows or some data from the table, <coughs> sorry, and we will publish it on the UI. Just fit it on the UI, show some table or uh, nice cards. So in that case, what happened is, 
I would personally go with request response. There is no financial loss. And it could be if it is an e-commerce site where we are showing set of products and if there is an issue, at least 50% of the customers, they might get angry and I will lose business. Okay. And uh, the flip side is if I go through the messaging pattern where service A drops a message in the backbone or bus queue and the service B picks it up, goes, gets the data and publishes it here. Now, if this channel, if it is taking two or three seconds more, so it might be overkill. I mean, we can't expect the user to wait for 10 seconds or 12 seconds in this one. I'm not telling that it's going to take 10 or 12 seconds, but just think what is right and within how many seconds we are getting and is that the right tool for us? If there is a financial loss, like you made a payment for the order which you're placing, so that payment has to go through no matter what, even if not today, tomorrow. So the user is not waiting in front of the screen for uh, the transaction to be completed. Like if you see any e-commerce site, I'll take example of Amazon. I, yesterday I placed an order and I got a message, a red color uh, uh, due, and they were telling that uh, transaction has gone through, please wait for 20 minutes. So after 20 minutes, they again sent a welcome uh, message to the Amazon Prime, your transaction was successful. So in this case, you, you can't expect the user to wait for 20 minutes in front of the screen. So that's like an asynchronous. They took the message and this gave me the first cut of uh, saying that, hey, we received the payment, we are working on it. Or the payment would have failed, please come and try after 20 minutes. So those kind of things which we will take. So that's about this one. And the second point in this, when the service to service communication happens is, Service A calls B, B calls C, C calls T. So while this is happening, so one of the thing is, if service D is failing, so how much time service C should wait on D? So should it wait 30 seconds for timeout or should it wait five seconds? What is the SLA, service level agreement between service to service? So that's the key thing. So if at all, I imagine that service A to service B is five seconds and B to C is five seconds, C to D is five seconds. So in this chain, so what is that SLA we can fix it is maximum of 15 seconds. So if it is timeout is happening and C to D is waiting for 30 seconds. So 30 plus five plus five, 40 seconds user has to wait. So which is not uh, acceptable. So in that case, what we can fix it is any service to service communication happens. If I don't get response within four seconds, I'm going to time it out. So the first thing is timeout is very, very important. And the second thing is transient errors. So the errors which, which will be like a temporary blip kind of thing. So service is not responding for some reason or it is getting rebooted or only the transient errors. So it makes sense to retry. So how many times you need to retry? There are again, a couple of ways to do. One is the flat retry. So if I say retry three times, so every five seconds I retry. So flat five seconds, I'm not going to wait more than that. The other way is exponential. So first retry, I make it now. First time it failed, I will retry after five seconds. And then second retry, I'll make it after 30 seconds. And third retry, I'll make it after 60 seconds. So this way exponential, I'm just giving hypothetical numbers. It's not the exact numbers, but exponential retry makes sense when, by the time when we make this exponential retries, the service would have healed itself. Assume that it's in a container and container crashed for some reason and the container is coming down. So the first attempt would have failed when it makes a retry after five seconds, assume that unfortunately it failed the second one also. The second retry is we are doing after 30 seconds. By 30 seconds, the container would have come up. 
So that time it will go through. So that's about the retries when it is service to service communication. So now if you see that for Dapper, for you to work with Dapper to how do you go with it? The first thing is you have to do the installation. So you can come to this Windows because I'm working in NS, I'm telling about this Windows. There are other uh, OS it supports. And you can see that you can use the PowerShell, but please use everything with uh, admin rights. Okay, I'll open that as a as an admin right. And uh, you can use Winget, the Windows Package Manager, or you can purely go ahead with the binaries. So 1.12 is the latest one. If I come in here, Dapper version, you can see that the mm -hmm. CLI is 1.12 and runtime is also 1.12. So that's about uh, this one. So you need to install. And uh, after installing, so we need to initialize. So while initializing the DAP dapper, you can do it in two different ways. So two different ways in the sense, one on your local box, one inside the Kubernetes. So it should be elevated terminal. You need to do DAP dapper in it. While you do this dapper in it, what happens is it initializes some of those uh, things. I'll open these terminals so that we'll see dapper dashboard. We'll see this dapper dashboard. Let me come in here to this uh, dapper dashboard. Come it. Come in here and uh, show you guys the Dapper dashboard. So this is the Dapper dashboard, and you can see in the documentation they said that uh, while we do the init, it is going to bring in some of these uh, Redis container, Zipkin, and other default components, whatever it is uh, needed. Running the Dapper placement service container instance, it's uh, for the actor support. But let's focus on the components which it installs. If you come in here, the home, it shows what all the applications which are getting executed within the dapper. And this one shows that what all those things which are getting uh, installed, like Zipkin and other things. So where do you see that? If I come in here, you see that uh, dapper placement. Here you can correlate with that. And uh, that's in the default folder containers and also the Redis and also Zipkin. So Zipkin is the one which uh, you can run this query to find out the traces as well as the dependency. We'll see, uh, periodically we'll come and we'll uh, make a try of the Zipkin, but as of now understand that you have a Dapper dashboard where you'll, it will show that the applications which are running in Dapper and uh, the default components which get installed and this one. So when it comes to the Dapper, one important point which I wanted to execute, the publish subscribe, we'll see that what is that we will be discussing. This is very, very important. Uh, when you initialize the dapper, you can initialize locally or in Kubernetes. So when it is in Kubernetes, that's a separate container. So I'm parking that uh, if I explain without the visual representation or without showing the things in the container lively, it might confuse. But let's stick to the game plan. It's not inside the Kubernetes, it is inside our local box. So what happens is when you install the dapper or initialize the dapper, install and initialize the dapper on local, not in Kubernetes. Installation on local, but the initialization will be either in local or in Kubernetes. So this is local. 
we did initialization. So what happens is the service, each service will be married to a sidecar dapper. Okay. So these two are a couple and another service and another dapper sidecar, these two are one couple, they get married. So that that's what will happen. So each and every service will get married to a dapper sidecar. So that's about the thing. We will come back and we'll revisit that. So this is the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. The dapper was started by Microsoft and uh, it got given to the open source. Now open source community is doing a pretty good job uh, doing a lot of enhancements and we'll see that magic now. Let's discuss about two microservices. What do we have at this point of time? So if you, uh, technically I should have opened it here. Okay, uh, I'm, uh, I'm opening it here. So what is that we have at this point of time? We will see that. So the first thing is, I have a core because this is the starting point. We'll slowly come and initialize and build on top of it for the rest of the year. We'll have a UI, the front end and everything will develop it, but we will go step by step. So see uh, inside the core, as of now, I'm using only the welcome routes. I'm not using anything else. Um, we'll, we'll start using next uh, episode. And uh, the next thing is, uh, okay. So the next thing is we will be having a data project. And inside the data project, we have three entities. As of now, as I was mentioning, we are not cooking to any database or any collection. It's just a plain, our focus is mainly on the service to service invocation. So there are three entities. So let me close all these three and come back to our uh, microservices. There are two microservices. One is orders microservice. And inside, if you see that, the program class is only five lines. <clears throat> there is a folder called extension. Inside that, all the service um, uh, collection, or everything you load it as part of the service collection for the dependency injection, everything has been moved to a single extension methods. So all the service in the service collection will load it here in this container. And the HTTP request pipeline, we move to a, another method. So that is the reason if you see that, the program class is pretty lean, it's five lines. So one extension method to configure the container, one extension method to configure the HTTP pipeline. And there's one controller, and you can see that this controller, uh, we are using some of the new features. I'm using the primary constructor. That is the reason, it, even though we are doing the constructor injection of this logger, you don't see a constructor here. I'm using the primary constructor. And uh, you can see that from services and from body, we are good citizens, we are using that. Uh, and dapper client is getting injected here in this one. So where is that you have loaded? If you come here, here we are adding add controller and add dapper. So that's where the dapper client, you can see that dapper client is getting injected and we are seeing that uh, the serialization options for uh, naming like lower case, the camel case. Okay, now this is- uh, so Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, can you show us like what is the uh, NuGet packages that we need to add here to get this uh, yes. Dapper clients? Sure. Actually, uh, I need to know. I mean, like it's better to know about them as well. Here. Uh, Dapper.asp.net code. That's okay. Done. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you're welcome. All the time. Uh, so again, I'll show you that one of it. The good points. So you can. Uh, See what we have installed. We have installed Dapper and the Swash Buckle. I'll leave it all the time because I want uh, this to be shown in the Swagger. <clears throat> and here, <clears throat> the key thing is we are using Dapper to invoke the second service. We'll come back to that one. 
because at this point of time, if you discuss, it might be a little bit uh, off the track. So we'll stick to the game plan. So this is full blown controller API. What is very important is we have extension method and it is in .NET 8 and we are using some of the .NET 8 features and one out of that is this one. I really like this. I'll show about that once we start executing. Now let's come back to another service, which is minimal API. And again, if you see that the minimal API, we are having the same uh, dapper NuGet 1.12 and uh, Swashbuckle and Open API for uh, the Swagger. And we are using these two uh, libraries. And again, if you see that the program dot class is again very slim with five lines. And we have the same similar. I'm, I don't want to call it as same because some of those services are a little different. Uh, application services, we are the service container. Building the service container, we are having in one extension method and HTTP request pipeline in another extension method. The key thing here is how do you inject the iLogger is little different. So this is one of the way which I uh, was struggling a couple of days ago. Uh, the When I moved, if I have it here, it will be pretty easy. I can go get this uh, logger from here itself. If I say uh, app.logger, here if I say app. See this, I will get the instance of the app.logger if I write the method right here inside the program dot class, but we are not doing that, isn't it? What we are doing is we are writing a similarly how we have the controllers folder. I've created an endpoints folder. I'm writing all the business logic, a separate methods similar to how action methods are there. We are doing something similar to that. So this is map post reserve. So for that to get hold of this uh, i logger that's one cache what you have to do is this is one of the way i was uh, browsing uh, stack overflow and i like this one a very simple thing is we can uh, do this get the required service i logger factory and create a i logger factory that's it so that gets we are adding transient i logger so other methods can take advantage of this. So that's the one thing which is a new. Uh, I learned it day before yesterday. So this is a reserved method. That means we are saying that I reserve these items. So what happens is if you see this controller, if I order comes, there are 10 items in the order. We'll traverse in the order. We'll take help of Dapper and visualize uh, this picture. So this is the order order and it is traversing. And if there are 10 items, every time we are calling the tapper client. So that means it, it doesn't call directly order process. So let's take our own order versus our item reserved. So for every item inside the order, it calls its own dapper sidecar. Okay, these two are married and these two are married. So it doesn't talk directly to item reservation service, but this calls to the dapper sidecar. You can see that that calls to the dapper sidecar and dapper sidecar goes and talks to the name resolution. Like what is this name resolution? We'll come and see that in a minute. And then it identifies and calls this one. Okay, that's about those two services. So now let's go to the second step. We'll see that how we will be able to execute it. I mean, a different uh, types we can do. We'll see that. I'll show step by step. First, we'll come back to the first tab. Let me do a CD of this and let me go to the second tab. And I'll open the reservation service. And I say dapper list. Dapper list, it says that no dapper found. Another way we can find that is if you come to the home, it should show this. So there are no dapper applications running, so it will not show anything. So now 
what I can do is I can come back to the first one. I can do dot net run. And uh, similarly, I can do dot net run. So this is not the right way we are running because we are not taking the complete advantage of Dapper, the sidecar which runs along with each of the microservices. So what happens is here, if you see, if you want to go and hit the orders controllers action method, order action method, I'll not be able to hit it because inside the code, I'm not using the HTTP pipeline, the HTTP client or HTTP client factory to invoke the item reservation service. So that's not possible. We are using the dapper client. So that means you need to visualize this picture over here. This guy talks to dapper. That means we have to execute this microservice using dapper. If we execute it with dapper run, sorry, .NET run, it will not work. We'll, we'll see that in a minute. See if I uh, copy this URL and uh, come in here and do a swagger on this. It is here. If I want to try this, it will fail. Because inside the code, we are using Dapper. So it says that it's unable to find uh, a method on the application ID because now the dapper, we are not executing with the dapper, so it's not able to find it. But we will be able to execute the reservation service, item reservation service, because item reservation service is not dependent. Uh, I mean, it can direct, we can directly hit it. Uh, we can directly hit it. Like I can come in, I can, uh, hit this method, I can hit this one also, but it doesn't make sense. Technically, someone order service should call. I can directly hit it because there's no dapper client inside that because it's only the communication from order service to item reservation service. So that's how we execute it using the .NET. It's not using dapper. Now we'll go to the second step where we will Execute it with a dapper. I've given all the commands here. So, so this one we are executing it with dapper. And right now we are not using the resiliency. This one is with resiliency. This one is without resiliency. First, let's uh, at least start with without resiliency. And oh god, sorry. This is the first step where I need to execute. This is orders. So it is executing the order service. You can see that now the control is in dapper. Now you can come back here and do a dapper list. You see that order service is there. So this is the application ID. So dapper internally recognizes this local name. Now we can come back to this one to oh see that it's it's already there. So if you see, it recognizes there are no actors. It's not a uh, stateful microservice. So it's just, it recognizes with this one. So that's the uh, built-in name resolution it's going to take care. So now let's come back and uh, execute the second microservice also. We are executing the second microservice. So another microservice is also getting executed. Now I can come and execute dapper list. Now it shows the application ID, order service, as well as the item reservation service. Now we'll come back to the dapper dashboard. And here you see both this one. So inside the orders microservice, if you come and see that, the app ID here in this method, dapper client dot invoke method async. We have the application ID is that items reservation service. So when you see that kind of thing, the communication which is happening between the orders microservice and the items reservation microservice is happening through the application ID, the local naming. So that means what happens is 
even internally the ip address changes we don't need to worry because dapper goes by the application name so what does that mean is if i'm executing that in the dapper port 5020 tomorrow i change to 5030 it doesn't worry because what is that the order service is communicating it is communicating with the application id so that's what is key here you see this what is the application id we have given inside the code we are using the same application id if the application id is changed then we are in problem as an until the application name is not changed dapper uses the application name even though whether it is deployed in container a or container b it is having the ip address of one or ip address of five it's it's immaterial for it for it is the local name is very very important so let's speak about those couple of things and we'll come uh, and see this one so the first point we discussed that it goes by the name now what is this service to service invocation so if you see that dapper facilitates uh, a standardized approach to make this service to service invocation seamless okay and we also discussed that sidecar we have seen the pictures also every service will get married to its own local uh, dapper sidecar so those two become one pair so if you have five services each of the service will have its own sidecar dapper sidecar okay and you can see that um, the complexity of the network communication or the, whether ip address is uh, changed or anything it doesn't uh, matter for it what is very important is it uses the app id and the name resolution also we will see this one important point let me copy the link address let's go to that particular tab where i'm opening all uh, the dapper related one so you can see that the name resolution what is that before the name resolution is this one and let me go to what was the previous one Oh, I think this also we have, we have seen here. Okay, we didn't see, I'm sorry for that. So you can see what is very important is it just goes by the local name. So that is what is very, very important. Oh, we have seen this one. So here it, they have given clearly given everything. Uh, the resiliency piece we are going to come in a minute. But as of now, as I was mentioning that we are doing the HTTP calls. Okay, so that's uh, a lot of discussion we made it. Now let's come and see how do we invoke. So we saw that you can directly invoke using the port of this one. But the key thing is you need to remember is you're executing both the service using Dapper because the order service is using dapper to invoke the reservation service it's not using any other mechanism but it is giving the responsibility to invoke the items reservation service to dapper so please remember that that's the catch okay it's not a catch it's a, a prerequisite now if you see that let's see the logs over here have the logs nothing after this what i'm doing is i'm using the direct port so the 5000 port you can see here and uh, items reservation is running in 5002. I'm coming to here and I'm sending it. This is I'm invoking directly so you can come and see that. Uh, here you will see the difference uh, when you directly hit. But the condition is both these microservices are being executed inside the Docker. That's the first prerequisite. And the second thing what we are doing is we are hitting on the direct port, not on the dapper port you can see that here we have the app port and we have the dapper port we have the grpc we will come back a uh, little later in the game but if you see that we are hitting the app port so when you hit the app port it executes you see the logs the different in the the difference in the logs are that it goes through the regular channel like how it 
you hit uh, application, it goes to the controller and controller to the method and rest of the HTTP pipeline, you will see that. Now, what I'll do is I'll use the dapper to invoke. So when you are invoking the dapper, it is like version invoke, the service name and the method, and what is the route of the method. So here what I'm doing is I'm eating through the dapper. Now come and watch the logs. If you see, this was the first hit when we did it, all the way till here. Okay. And uh, you can see that the second hit, it doesn't show any of these uh, port numbers and other things. See the, all the way port number is done till here. So that means this, we came through the app port. Now this one, we are coming through the dapper. So that means this channel. We are coming through this channel where this hits this and this talks to name resolution and talks to the respective dapper sidecar and it hits it. The first hit was like this, which is not suggestible because <clears throat> the intention of me using dapper is dapper to do all the heavy lifting. Just wanted to show it is possible, but all the services should be executed through the dapper. So you see the difference anywhere. We are not seeing this 5000 port. That means it is happening through programmatically and all the heavy lifting is done line number 27. All the heavy lifting is done by the dapper. And now uh, that we have seen it, and another way to do is I have given Trip Swami question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Is it okay to ask? So no, the dapper no, one took 10 seconds and the other one took less than that. Is that our observation? Oh, the direct no, port. No. Oh, see, it took 35 milliseconds. And the uh, other one? That's the first hit, isn't it? It's uh, uh, 700 milliseconds. Okay, so the dapper one is faster. Is that what you see? See, it could, uh, based on this one particular hit, we can't uh, say that it, it will be faster, but it has to be deployed in a production environment, even though in a low computing virtual machine or app service or uh, the Kubernetes container, and we need to really test uh, a performance test on this one. It will be definitely faster because it's it's going to have its own channel Okay. Uh, then be making a HTTP call to HTTP call, but internally this one is also making the it, it, this one is also using the dapper. If you see, it was 715 milliseconds because that was the first hit. The app will be in cold mode, so it yeah. has to hit order service. Then the item service both are in cold mode. Now see this, it will be much faster. If I do the second hit, it came to 17 milliseconds. All right. Okay. Fair enough. You got it. It was the first hit where yeah, it, yeah. it took to load all these it. libraries. Yes. Got it? Right. Yeah, thanks. Cool. Cheers. Uh, yeah. Swami. Yeah. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, as you are in the same uh, line of question, so I just want to understand. So um, anyway, as uh, Pasha asked, like, uh, you know, fastness is not a primary reason to go for dapper, right? So can you elaborate us like what exactly? See, Okay, now uh, as an end user, I'll ask you this question saying that like, uh, hey man, when you can able to communicate uh, both APIs in both the ways, so what makes us to choose go for choose for a dapper for sure? I mean like, again, this might be a basic question basically, but no, I just is, want to know. It is, the, it is on the table that uh, what are the question you have asked uh, that is on the table and that's the next section. That's the next. OK, 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 yeah, got it. This section, resiliency. OK, so, got it. I was. Yeah, yeah. And, sure. and another thing, uh, Sai, if you see the first point is I uh, I told just now I told it, but again, I'll, uh, I would like to bring that point on this one. Imagine a scenario where we deployed these two services, the the service, uh, this order service. We said the app port is 5002. It, it is here. Where did I? Yeah, here. If you see this, the application port is 5002. And the order service, the application port is 5001. Imagine a scenario 
if I change this from 5002 to 5003, if I'm doing a direct HTTP client call, then there will be a code change in orders service. Maybe the configuration change, app service or um, app service or app settings or secrets.json or environment variables, wherever you're holding that the URL for item service that has to change. But, and I use Dapper, the first benefit what I'm getting is the name resolution. That means if you see the, even if the port number it changes, we are not going through the port number, IP address or the port number. What we are doing is we are going through the name resolution. Name resolution says that, hey, I know that items reservation service has been registered. Here is that information. And it goes and makes the call to the sidecar of items reservation. If you see that, the Dapper forwards the message to Bs. How does it knows that? Dapper discovers items reservation service location using name resolution component. So all it does is just by the name. So this is order service. This is items reservation service. Both of them get registered in the name resolution. So no matter whether it, de it deployed in any of this IP address or the port number changes, it doesn't matter for it because it goes by the app ID. That's okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, that makes sense, uh, uh, Swami, but I, I see, uh, as a person like now that we are in a you know very strange world i mean like we were so so much faster but like like let us assume if we deploy you know our order service in azure like probably with some dns uh there are some some things called dns uh naming convention so by which uh we don't rely on ip address at all see for example let's assume we are we are deploying in uh you know any of the cloud technologies we were nowhere uh they were nowhere coming up with the ip address concept Yes, but the port number will matter, isn't it? I don't, but OK, that's fine. I was excited towards resiliency at the current oh, moment. Yeah, that's what that's the second second piece. We'll, we'll come back to the resiliency, yeah. OK? Yeah, uh, sure. So what I'll do is at this point of time. See, one more key piece to talk is. <clears throat> right now, whatever I executed without resiliency. So now I brought the order service down. Now I'm going and hitting the through Dapper. I'm hitting the order service. I bought the item service down. Now, if you see that it's waiting so much of time to do the timeout. So it's almost 11 seconds. It, it might be a little bit faster, but let's see that. Uh, what is that it is doing? How many seconds it is taking? Around 11 seconds it is taking. So now what I will do is I'll come and kill this one also. And we'll execute this, the first service through resiliency. So first benefit, let's discuss about that. First we'll see, first it, it will definitely take time. We know that, but let's try that. Uh, it has to fail, but it should fail a little faster or it might take 11 seconds. Let's do a second it also. And also it does a retries. Here, if you see that, it did a first retry and it is retrying in five seconds and it is second retry and then third retry and then it came to the circuit breaker from close to open and it did a half open so it, it will allow one more hit so it's, it's taking the configuration whatever we have given we didn't write a single line of code all we did is we gave the configuration and we said the dapper to go ahead and do that so whatever this 40 seconds you're seeing it's a consolidation of all the uh, all the pieces inside the mix we'll see that in a minute and now if you see that it made it half open and we're trying to make uh, another call and again if you see that it is making a retry first time it failed it was half open and then it made a first retry and uh, 
it will do a second retry and it will open the circuit breaker. So if you see from the circuit breaker perspective, first we will see that theoretically what it is and then we'll uh, come back and discuss about this. Let me come in here and uh, open this as well as I will open this resiliency. We'll come back to resiliency. First, let's focus on the circuit breaker. Now, if you see that, uh, the first thing, the circuit breaker is closed. So that means the request will go through this. And what will happen is if there are consecutive failures, so what it does is from closed, it make it to open. So that means it will not allow any traffic because it knows that uh, the service B is not responding, no point in going and hitting it. So again, when it opens, uh, the circuit is open. That means it will not allow the traffic. There is a timer. So that means after the circuit is open, after n number of seconds, it makes it half open. That means it allows a single request just to uh, see whether the circuit, the call goes through. If at all the call goes through, it will make it closed. If the call doesn't go through, then it make it open. So that's what we have seen the behavior. If you go and look at the logs, here it was half open previously when we were trying that. So it was half open and it was, when it was half open here, when it was half open, it did a retry and then it found that the call is not going through. Then immediately it said that it is open. So that's about the entire circuit breaker pattern itself is being taken care of by that. And what is our part is, we just need to configure it. We configure this. So we said that timeouts, just wait for eight seconds. And uh, retries, a policy is constant, okay? Or it could be like uh, exponential or other things, different policies are there. I'm using constant. So that is the reason in the logs also we are seeing Retrying after five seconds, retrying after five seconds. So max of three retries. And the circuit breaker, we are saying that max one request, interval is 60 seconds gap, and timeouts is eight seconds. If it is more than three consecutive failures, enable the circuit breaker, breaker pattern. So I have uh, given the link of uh, the resiliency also here, if you see that. Yes, here, the resiliency. So the resiliency is made up of three pieces, timeouts, retries, and circuit breaker. Now, if you go to each and individual pieces, here, if you see that, the complete example of the policy. So we see that the timeouts, we are saying that the, what is this one? For me, I make, made it eight because I was trying different options so that I can see all the logs, okay? Retries is, this is not only for the service to service, for other things also we can bring in. That's one key point. Uh, I didn't try other as I was, this is the first thing, I'm going step by step. This is the first thing I tried it. So for now we will discuss about the service to service. Later in the game, we'll come and we'll discuss about the other components which resiliency is being supported. So retry here, the policy is exponential. I've used a constant, so every, uh, five seconds, it does it. Here in the exponential, 15 seconds, and then exponentially, it will do those tries. And uh, circuit breaker also, the max of one request. Timeout is 30 seconds, because for me, I'm doing the retry, I made it to 60 seconds. And uh, when should we trip? After three. Anything more than three, I was tripping it off. So this is one of the key thing. This is one of the key thing which uh, makes the using of dapper helpful. Now I switched on that. I can come in to this one and uh, hit it. It's going through. Now we can come and see the logs of the order service. See, it was half open. From open, after the 
respective time out, it will be open to half open. As we have seen in this diagram, it will make this piece from open to half open after the timer expired. So it made that and then the call went through. So it said that half open to closed. It transitioned to this state, right? So we can do one more thing. Uh, we can make a couple of uh, other hits to see whether it is flushing out any of those uh, Zipkin logs. We'll see that. There you go. So see this. Here the logs are pretty clear. We can get deep into the weeds to see that. Some of the good thing which I liked it about uh, the Zipkin is I was able to go to that level of uh, details uh, where it clearly shows that when it made the retry, when it did all those things, I was able to do that. And another thing is this uh, dependency also, it clearly shows that from which service to which service you have a dependency. We'll come back about uh, this Zipkin piece. I, just, I could not uh, control my happiness that uh, day before yesterday when I was exploring this, I saw it gives a pretty good uh, information on that one. So whatever the number of seconds it took it, and also the dependency graph, it gives like which service is dependent on which. So we'll understand uh, a little bit more about this one. So another thing, see this, it clearly shows that if at all there are errors also, it will show that the bubbles will be in two different colors. Uh, that's what I observed, uh, at least multicolor. Let me call it as a multicolor. Uh, let me bring this guy down. And this time let's use the HTTP files. So this is the direct hit uh, to that. And you can use this uh, this one to, well, we'll come back. It's not giving control. See this, now it is giving. We can use uh, this one also. So it, it will also make a call. So it's, I think, enabling to, uh, let's make that. So this failed, circuit breaker is open. Now you can see that this one also, you can make a call, whether it is through direct call. It said that item service is not there because we killed it. So when I make the direct call, it will not be able to recognize and I can make the call through this one. Let's come back to the Zipkin logs. And uh, let's run this one, or uh, we can come in and find the queries. I mean, it will take a little bit of time, but still you will be able to see a decent amount of uh, um, information in this uh, Zipkin logs. That's one of the container. We have seen it here, okay? So that's about it, guys, uh, uh, in this episode. So the next episode is, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss about uh, another topic inside uh, the Dapper itself. So let's uh, spend a lot of time on, uh, on this piece itself. So I'll just quickly walk you guys through the game plan. Now, out of this building blocks, we discussed the first building block. So there are a lot of other building blocks. So even if we take uh, one building block in one episode, it will be good. I mean, if at all something can fit in, uh, I mean, we just touch the tip of uh, iceberg in a, from the observability perspective. I don't even consider it as we touched it. So I'm leaving it. If something fits in two, or more pieces, building blocks in an episode, we will do it. But let's keep focus on one piece, we'll discuss. Let's see what can I bring in, maybe one out of these three, maybe the state management or the publish, subscribe or binding, I don't know what, but I'll bring in in the next episode. So entire, uh, 
entire uh, uh, year we will spend on that. So this one is done. Uh, next will be purely from the .NET 8 and, uh, uh, and artificial intelligence, Azure OpenAI. We'll, we'll be discussing on that one. So you see this uh, AIML. Um, I did uh, one of this uh, demo. It is purely on uh, Beat and uh, Node.js and Express. So that is uh, React 18. It was done through Beat. And uh, it will be having the backend of uh, Node.js server. Uh, which will be speaking with uh, Azure OpenAI to do the completion uh, job. So it will be a mix of all uh, latest .NET 8, uh, Azure OpenAI, and Dapper. So year 2024 is full of uh, microservices or uh, distributed architecture and uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I might not be able to touch the data analytics this year. I'll see if I'm able to, but just want to focus purely on the Dapper um, microservices, distributed architecture, uh, and uh, latest .NET 8. We'll touch upon the uh, the database EF Core 8, minimal API, full blown controller APIs, uh, gRPC, uh, Blazor Wasm, Signal R. Like every month, a different theme, but every month a dapper, every month a different theme in .NET 8, and uh, a different artificial intelligence. So that's about this one. So please uh, subscribe to that YouTube channel. I will edit and upload this. And I sincerely apologize again for uh, being late. I am stopping the recording. If you have any queries, we can speak. Do you guys have 